Hey Driven Youth Group, this is the 49th installment of the Exile Challenge and we are in Revelation chapter 8. The silence before the storm. Have you ever been in that, uh, have you ever had that experience where just before a great storm comes in, there's just this calm and all of a sudden you feel and you hear and you experience the big rush of wind come, the rain just pours the lightning strikes, the thunder peals, and it's kind of an intimidating sight, and you can just sense it. You know, I was talking to someone just the other day about when we uh, see the leaves turn up and you see the whiteness of the leaves, and you know that's a sign that, man, there's a pretty bad storm that's probably going to come our way. And this is what we're kind of experience, experiencing here in Revelation chapter 8. This is the calm before the terrible wrath of God is poured out on the entire world. And here it is, when the Lamb opened the seventh seal. So we already opened the six seals, and that was in Revelation chapter 6. Revelation chapter 7 was a description of the 144,000 and the uh, probably thousands, if not millions of people who come to faith in Jesus Christ during this future seven-year tribulation time period. Um, and then we come to chapter 8, and the seventh seal is open from that scroll that was taken from the hand of God, the right hand of God, and it's popped open, and then the scroll is opened, read, and all the people can do is just stop and stand or kneel or lay prostrate in silence because of the terrible um, actions or terrible wrath that's getting ready to come on upon the earth, this terrible judgment. And so that's what we find, just silence. I don't know about you, but uh, it's difficult sometimes just to stand in silence for a minute, especially in a large crowd. And can you imagine being in a crowd in heaven of millions and millions and millions of people, uh, angels, um, and then there'd just be dead silence. It'd be kind of an eerie feeling, I would assume. But then all of a sudden, an angel comes uh, with a censer, uh, and this censer was used in the Old Testament uh, to put incense on to burn and kind of picture prayers of the saints. And so what it says here in verse 3, And another angel came and stood at the altar with a golden censer, and he was given much incense to offer with, with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints rose before God from the hand of the angel. And after which the angel takes some firebrands from the altar and casts them down to the earth, and there's peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. And this just begins the, uh, the great birth pains, uh, the great wrath of God that's getting ready to come on this last three and a half years of this seven-year tribulation time period. What an eerie feeling. But it's interesting that the prayers of the saints are mingled in with this judgment that's coming down upon the earth. Now, who, whose prayers are these? And most likely, it's, well, it's definitely the prayers of the saints that are mentioned in Revelation chapter 6, verse 9, the ones under the altar that are uh, pleading to God that he would bring justice to the world, that he would bring judgment down upon the earth to avenge them of their death. But I think also it's, it could be the prayers of the saints throughout time who have prayed that God, his kingdom would come and that he would bring justice upon the earth. And I think that's a great possibility as well. And so could it, could it be that if you've prayed to God and asked him that he would, that he would come, that he would bring justice to the earth, uh, that, he would, uh, that he would punish the wicked, um, that this might be also one of your prayers that are lifted up before God, and this begins the trumpet judgments here. And so we have in chapter 8, uh, four of the trumpet judgments that are mentioned here. And it seems like most of these all come from the sky. And so we have here the first 
trumpet judgment is hail and fire that's mixed with blood, and a third of the earth is burned up, a third of the trees, and all of the grass is burned up. The second uh, judgment is, is, it seems to be this big comet or asteroid that comes out of the, out of the sky, hits the uh, sea, and destroys a third of the sea, uh, kills a third of the fish, uh, or the uh, sea life, and destroys a third of the ships. Um, and then the third judgment is a great star that fell from heaven. Now, most likely, this is not an actual star, like a sun, uh, but it would probably be some sort of uh, asteroid of some kind that comes out of, the, out of the sky, would be my assumption. And this one has some sort of effect, they call it wormwood, hits the fresh water, I believe. Um, yes, the, the name, it hits the, the rivers and the springs and pollutes them, so much so that when the people even drink from this uh, fresh water that was uh, impacted by this, uh, that it that it kills them. And the fourth of an angel, the the fourth angel blew its trumpet, and the third of the sun was struck. The third of the moon, the third of the stars, and the third of their light might be darkened, and the third of the day might be kept from shining, and likewise a third of the night. And so what happens is now there's this kind of darkness that. Uh, overshadows the earth. So not only are all these destructive forces coming out from the heavens, but now we have darkness upon the earth. And I uh, know as you grew up as a little, a little child, you probably weren't very fond of the dark. Not many people are. And now darkness is over the earth to some extent. And these terrible judgments are being thrust upon the earth. Why? Because of the sinfulness of mankind. And God is coming in, he's coming to bring his kingdom in, and he is destroying the kingdoms of this world. Well, there's a lot of people in the world that says that, uh, well, you know, the God in the Old Testament, he's just a big meanie, and he's always bringing vengeance and judgment upon the earth. Man, when we look at the book of Revelation, we see a God that's consistent throughout uh, the, the Bible. This is a God who is holy and righteous and just and does not turn a blind eye to sin and injustice in the world. And he will make all things right. This is our God. This is a God that will bring wrath upon the earth. It's going to happen. He's going to bring justice to the earth. But he's not just a God of wrath. He's not a God that's mean or hateful. But he is a God of love, grace, and he is willing for people to come to faith in Jesus Christ, that their sins might be forgiven, that they can receive the free gift of salvation. This is a God that wants to offer this to the people. And he is giving them time, even through all these destructive uh, judgments upon the earth, to repent of their sins and turn from their evil ways. But as we find throughout the book of Revelation, these people love their sin, they hate God, and they refuse to repent. We need to be people as we read the book of Revelation to remember that God is holy, righteous, and just. And we need to purify ourselves, because this judgment's a is getting ready to come upon the whole earth. And you and I, we need to have compassion for our unbelieving friends and neighbors. And we need to go and share the love of Jesus Christ, this gospel message. And I pray that you will do this. And as you read the book of Revelation, it will give you even a greater desire to go out and share the gospel 